What is up guys? Welcome back. Coming to you guys with another Clear Lake fishing report. Uh, just got off the water and uh, cleaning up stuff on my boat and kind of getting things organized for my trip tomorrow. And I figured I would come to you guys with another report. Um, I know it's been a little bit since my last one, but I uh, do them about once a month. So, or when things kind of start to change or, or things like that start to happen. So um, I like to bring you guys some new information um, rather than just kind of keep giving you guys the same old information. So let's start out with lake conditions, right? So previous report, lake was kind of up there, you know, above eight foot Rumsey and all that stuff. I'm not sure exactly what it is at the moment. Um, I know Ross just did a, uh, a report and he said it was like seven point, what, something, 7.76 7 or something like that. I'm looking it up right now. Ah, we're at 7.96, right? So it's actually come up a little bit. Uh-oh. So anytime it's, uh, you know, above eight foot or something like that or something, I'm not exer sure exactly the rule, but what I've heard is that eight foot Rumsey or above, it's considered like a flood stage and that that five mile per hour is still kind of in place, right? Um, or if it's around that for more than 24 hours. Well, it's at 7.96 and currently rising. we got more rain on the way, so probably going to have a five mile per hour again. We'll see. Um, but just be courteous people's docks, you know, there's, it's still pretty high water and, um, you know, there can be damage from your boat wake on their dock. So, uh, just be courteous and try not to take off right at their dock or power down right on their dock. Right. Uh, I think it's mostly powering down, you know, for the most part, in my opinion, but Hey, don't be that guy that gets yourself a ticket. So, um, that is the, the lake level. Uh, when it comes to the water qu uh, quality, um, the water looks really good. I think the north end, which is predominantly where I've been fishing, um, you know, has the best, uh, you know, overall visibility for fishing. You know, two foot of visibility, uh, three foot in spots. Um, I think the south end's a lot clearer, and I don't really like clear water on Clear Lake, believe it or not. Um, not a huge fan of it. So I've been kind of staying up north for the most part for my bite, which I'll get to that. Um, but yeah, it's roughly the, the water conditions, right? You can get into some dark water areas where you're, you know, it looks like it's dirtier, but it's actually just darker. Um, and some of these shallow water sloughs that have that dark water. Um, and overall, I think the worst water clarity I saw, which is about a foot of visibility and, and less, um, was over by Rodman. So standard you know this time of year um at least what i'm learning right um water temperature has actually fluctuated quite a bit guys uh the warming trends and stuff had that water temperature up to as uh, as high as 63 is what the warmest i saw um which is insane um and there was actually fish fanning area those areas and actually getting ready to spawn and i've actually seen little tiny bass in some of these areas tiny bass i'm talking like that big um which is weird i don't know I don't know what, where those came from. Um, and we're catching fish that are oddly skinny in some of these weird areas, right? So um, not saying there's post-spawn fish, uh, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. Majority of the things you want to target are pre-spawn. And, um, you know, it's not necessarily a spawn situation yet. So don't get too excited. Because um, the water temps have dropped. And today it started out at 52, and it got up to about 56 um, and in most areas I saw. I mean on the main lake. I think it was probably a little warmer up in the shallow water estuaries, um, if I had to guess. So water temps have recovered a little bit, but we have another cold front starting tomorrow for the three days. We're going to have rain and clouds and all kinds of stuff. Love those type of conditions for, for the bite though, guys. Um, the warming trends are great and all, but these fish have a, a phenomenal way of, you know, moving up and getting wise really quick in these warmer temperatures. I like the colder temperatures for bigger fish. Um, at least now, now that we've kind of had a big population of fish push shallow, um, I've noticed that these cold, these cold fronts kind of get things really rolling for the bite. Um, I think that's all for the lake conditions wise. Um, you know, there's a lot of brush, a lot of, um, cover for these fish to get on. Uh, there is a little bit of grass growth and you guys, if you guys know, Clear Lake, you know what that means. And I'll get to some of the stuff here in just a minute of, of baits wise, but a little bit of grass growth, tiny little bit of grass in some of these areas of the lake. 
um, that you're snagging and bringing up. So um, anywhere you're catching some of that grass, pay attention to it. It's very, very good um, for, for big fish and for the forage that they're trying to eat to hide in. So um, let's get into what I'm catching them on, right? So that's what we are here for. The swim bait. Bariki shad, doesn't really matter whether it's a bariki, a JSJ loose caboose, a trash fish. If it's a swim bait, they're freaking eating it. And they're eating it really shallow as well as out deep, um, deeper, right? Catching a lot of fish in zero inches of water, six inches of water, um, out to eight, eight, ten foot of, of, of water with a swim bait. Um, you know, bottom bouncing swim bait, weedless application to come through a lot of trees, brush, tules, all that good stuff. Um, you know, a weedless bait is key to come through a lot of this stuff because you don't want to be that guy getting hung up, especially um, if you catch one, they're usually going to get another bite on the following cast. So you don't want to get hung up and have to go in there and get it and spook your school or whatever because these fish are very schooled right now. Um, whether No matter what bait you're throwing at them, you can catch fish on consecutive casts uh, you know, as long as you don't, as long if you figure out an angle, as well as, you know, you hit a bite window, right? So the swim bait is really good right now. Uh, and it's actually probably my number one, uh, producer of bites for me right now. And like I said, I'm mostly fishing the North end. So, um, keep that in mind. Uh, big Kytex doesn't really matter. It's, it's swim baits getting bit in the right areas. Bite windows do apply. You know, you guys coming from out of town. You might get your teeth kicked in for a while. Stick with it. F keep covering water. Um, like I said, there's areas that are inches deep that have fish right now. So you can go up behind brush. You can get way up in these areas, in this flooded area stuff, and throw a swim bait and catch fish. Um, but there is bite windows associated with these fish, especially once they're in that cover. They're kind of wise. You know, they know what the heck's going on. Um, they probably not the first time they've seen a swim bait uh, because they've been up shallow, right? Um, so, you know, bite windows, especially around the full moon right now are associated to first thing in the morning and high noon. Um, I've talked about that in previous videos. So that's your best time to catch a fish, um, you know, around the full moon. As we descend away from the full moon, the bite window gets later and later in my opinion. Um, so an afternoon bite window becomes a thing. Unfortunately, tournaments kind of suck. Like recently, my last tournament, I sucked. Uh, because I felt like a lot of my schools I was finding were just, I couldn't really get them to eat. I'm not a huge finesse fisherman, um, you know, and I probably should have finessed them. But then again, I don't, it was a chamber tournament. I don't really care. <laughs> it's one of those deals, right? I was getting a lot of uh, flack after that tournament because I, I didn't weigh in on day two. Well, yeah, because I stayed out and I waxed freaking fish on all kinds of spots. I went to two or three different spots and caught them on a freaking LV, which is my next bait, all right? Um, I was catching them really good around that time frame on an LV. Um, it's kind of died down a little bit again, um, but I think it's because we're you know we have some fish moving in fresh wise, but um, you know they're they're just going right into that brush, man. They're getting right up in some of that stuff, so it's really hard to get this thing through to them or to get them to come out and chase it. But God, that that time frame was fun on that lipless crankbait, um, as well as a swim bait too. Uh, but I was catching them you know pretty good in a lot of areas on that, um, but. Like I said, those bite windows are really key to get those fish to chew because um, they'll be in these areas, but you have to get them that first one to eat, right? And then they have to kind of get in that kind of feeding mentality uh, to catch a lot more. My client today kind of witnessed it. You know, we got one to eat, all of a sudden caught two more, three more, and then we had doubled up on a couple casts and, you know, I had two fish in one net type of deal. It was, it was awesome, you know? Um, so that type of bite is happening right now. You guys just have to time them up and really kind of know these little tiny spots right which is these are guide spots but like you can definitely stumble onto some of them as a an out-of-towner and stuff it's just not necessarily as easy right creeks are getting slammed with a lot of fishing pressure right now um i mean hell there's one boat sitting on 
one of what I consider my spots, right? But like there was fish there, uh, fish I had located. Um, they were sitting there all day, you know, and I couldn't really get on that. Um, and that's just what, you know, nature of the beast right now. You know, there's a lot of good fishermen out here. There's a lot of people that know their electronics and can see fish and they're going to sit there on them and try to pick them off, especially when they know there should be some fresh fish coming in to them, right? Um, fresh fish are the best fish right now. When they're pale, they're the dumbest. <laughs> when they're dark, they're kind of smart. <laughs> so if you're getting some dark fish on a technique um, that you're doing, you're, you might have hit a bite window or you're fooling some of these little bit wiser fish, which is great. Uh, but the pale fish are usually bigger and they're fresh moving up and they're kind of stupid. So those are the ones everybody wants to target right now. Um, and if you have an area where you're catching pale fish, you might want to stay there, you know, especially if it's a little bit, you know, noon or one o'clock, there's probably more coming, you know, and you could definitely pick off a giant that way. Our biggest bag we've had recently, it was 35 pounds with me and my, uh, my girlfriend. Um, you know, we caught them really good that day. And it was one of those days where they just kept moving in, decided to check an area that it was a creek that usually produces big bags rolled in there um actually didn't drove right over the top of those fish didn't even know they were there um caught a, a big one towards the back moved back out and got bit and after that bite i just sat there and waited and kept throwing and we kept catching them so we threw back another limit of 28 pounds on that spot and just absolutely waxed them and that's what can happen out here um when you line up that that one spot with you know fresh fish coming in right uh, which is awesome and that's what i hope you know some some of you guys watching this and stuff kind of line up you know if you're coming to visit the lake or, or whatever um because it's it's actually insane it's what clear lake is kind of known for um is, is running into some of that magic like that right some other baits i'm getting fish on right so i talked about the swim bait i talked about the lv um the a rig i wonder if my worms are still alive all right ladies and gentlemen if you want a bass you need to get yourself a bass slayer baits a rig right there that's a freaking clear lake slaunch <laughs> i don't have one on me it's on my front deck um a rig's getting bit really good um it's just it's not getting bit really good all day <laughs> you know it's um a timing thing right so that they might be in the middle of the day bites they might be towards the tail end of the day um, i'm getting not getting very many bites in the morning on it so um, it's just kind of a, a timing thing with the sun right they all of a sudden are willing to bite an a rig uh, as the day gets a little bit longer in my opinion i don't know some guys might be catching them in the morning but not it's not me um what else do i got tied up Dude, that's pretty much it. I got I got I got a glide bait tied up. I've been throwing that around. Haven't been catching a lot of fish on it, but I've been getting some good bites on it here and there. Um, but the quality right now has been coming on the A rig um, swim bait. You know, whether it's a glide or a, or a, a boot tail or some kind of bottom bouncing swim bait, um, and then the LV a little bit. I've been hearing of some good quality on a worm. Uh, you know, some some people have been reporting some bigger fish being caught on like a drop shot. And that makes sense when these fish start pushing shallow guys in this brush and stuff they get pressured and they get real kind of finicky and if they're on their bite window and you're not there at their bite window and you know there's some fish around don't be afraid to throw a worm because you could really pick off a giant that's just sitting there waiting for their bite window and you pick it off on a worm <laughs> believe it or not so i anticipate things to get really fun here to, uh you know soon with um you know some shallow cover fishing uh, there is full flip bite too. I didn't talk about that. Um, you know, there's a flip bite, 100%. It's just, it's been happening since the MLF. <laughs> I was I was catching them pretty good after uh, I got on that good old Ken Ma bite and went over there and kind of messed with that and caught some fish and then I replicated it in some other areas of the lake and it was great. Um, you know, a lot of guys are doing it now, so it's it's associated to um, you know specific vegetation in my opinion. Um, you can catch them, I think, everywhere on it, but you can catch them really good in certain vegetation. So you got to kind of target that, you know, around the lake. But um, there's fresh fish moving up every day, guys. Uh, I think it's really fun right now. I'm pretty toasted. You know, I, as you guys can see, I'm, my, my hands are freaking, it's it's bad. I, I chose a bad profession to be allergic to the sun. Um, so my, my hands are all blistering up and all kinds of shit. And I, I use sunscreen, guys. I, I, I put on sun masks. I do all this stuff. I'm just really sensitive to the sun, so uh, don't give me flack in the comments. Um, 
it's just one of those deals. So, yeah, it, it's it's fun right now, but I am toasted. Um, I am tired. I am beat. But God, is it? I can't stop now. You know, this this bite is is just getting going. Um, don't let anybody you know out there kind of bully you um, on the water. It's you know everybody just needs to get along. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of guys. I've had a lot of guys come at me, you know, I'm like, I'm not trying to take anybody's water doing that stuff. I'm just fishing out there. Um, yeah, I'm fishing where there's fish. And if I roll up on your spot and your spot and your fish, then I apologize, but it's not my intention. Um, I'm just out there finding fish where I find them and, and catching them where I catch them. So, um, and I could say the same, you know, deal about a lot of people that come up on my stuff and it's part of it. Um, now if you're paying a guide for spots and, and you know you're you're on those spots great but if you don't pay them and then you're on those spots it's a little different you know um, that's where it gets kind of frustrating um, at times which was kind of what i was frustrated about before um, but it's march it's march on clear lake it's part of it um, if you want to avoid the crowds fish south you know uh, the keys uh, i've heard have fish moving in um, wouldn't surprise me if some of these other little areas central and south have fish moving in um so it's definitely an area thing with that you know the hitch and the shad are moving um and i say shad guys not just hitch you know there are shad around right now and i'm talking up north so um might get some people pissed off about that but whatever um it's not just hitch so keep that in mind if you guys are looking to book a trip my next availability is april so um Get on my calendar, and let's go. Let's go get after them, dude. Um, it's a, it's a good time, and, and it's only going to get better, I think, with the with the fish pushing chow. And like I said, the, I think we'll see a pretty good cover bite starting to happen, with, whether it's frogging, flipping, drop shot, cinco, whatever. You know, it's going to be. I think it's going to be fun. Um, the way these fish are already relating to that that brush and everything. So, um, but other than that, I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.